Huwa, in the name of God, the most impregnable, the most holy. O God, blessings be upon the point of the Bayan, and whosoever believes in him with exaltedness and majesty. Um, this little podcast comes as a request from several people who wanted to open up a general topic about uh, utilizing uh, magic and the occult in the fight against the coronavirus. Um, the first thing I should say here is that um, my point of view on the utilization of um, theurgy, magic and the occult, or even goetic magic for that matter, um, during a time of the pandemic has to come with a couple of caveats. And the first caveat is that um, I personally am not advocating um, the use of occult technology as a replacement for material medical technologies. Uh, whether these medical technologies be, come from a homeopathic perspective or if they come from a Western empiricist, uh, empirical positivist perspective uh, uh, and what have you. So um, let's get that element out of the way first so people... If they contract the coronavirus or they believe that they are uh, possibly uh, a target to, to contract the coronavirus, they should always consult their doctor uh, and the medical uh, advice that is currently available. Nevertheless, what I am advocating is that in, in terms of fighting the coronavirus, it is not just enough to tackle this issue materially from a materialist medical angle. Uh, there appears to be an intelligence to this virus, which tells those of us who are tuned in to that uh, to these sorts of energies uh, that this intelligence has an occult locus. And this is one of the reasons why I do not believe any of the conspiracy theories that are floating on YouTube uh, and en elsewhere on social media, because it appears that these people... Um, are committing fallacies of logic by making synchronous events, such as, you know, governments locking things down and whatnot, um, the causality of the actual pandemic itself. And this is a fallacy. Um, the pandemic, the coronavirus, COVID-19, is a genuine virus. How it got out, I have my reasons, I have my explanations that I think um, are pretty safe uh, to say that this thing jump from the animal world into the human world, um, that it was it is not biological warfare. It is not a um, a false Hegelian dialectic to try to you know usher in uh, the new world order, although it is very possible that the powers that be in this planet may use this this situation to their advantage to do just that very thing, although I don't believe that we are headed uh, to something like that for now. Nevertheless, we want to talk about magic. We want to talk about theurgy. We want to talk about occult protection from the coronavirus. This is a big topic, and it is not a topic that can cover, be covered in one particular podcast. It is a topic that needs to be covered in several different podcasts. But at, for this particular podcast, I want to bring up some of the basic strategies offered in the corpus of the writings of the Bayan, revealed by the primal point of Bob, um, about a possible uh, occult uh, strategy of fighting this. Now, in uh, the 1847 to 1850 period, when we have the revelations of the Arabic and Persian bayans, and later in the 1850 period, when we have the revelation of the Book of the Talisman of the Religion, a Kaladin, the Bab offers uh, a very, one can say, almost a Islamo-pagan perspective on the issue of purity and purification. And in all three of these works, he suggests that the four elements, air, fire, water, and earth, are purifying agents. He also suggests, and this is not just a suggestion, this is an exp explicit statement in all three of these works, that the four elements, air, fire, wa water, and earth, purify whatever they come into contact with. Now, we're not talking about um, other elements or other essences that may have contaminated these four elements, but these four elements in their essence are purifying agents. Furthermore, the sun, the moon, and the stars are purifying agents, right? So this is seven things now. The four elements, air, fire, water, earth, then the sun, the moon, and the stars are purifying agents. And whatever comes into contact 
the, the force or the energies that are around the sun, moon, and the stars uh, purify whatever they come into contact with. Now, it's quite interesting, and people should note this, um, that one of the ordinances of the Bayan is for people to face the sun on Fridays, which means that is the period when the sun is in Venus, and recite, uh, there's several different prayers that the Bob reveals to as a, as a salutation to the sun. But one of the well-known prayers is, you know, إِنَّمَا الْبَهَا مِنَ اللَّهِ عَلَيْكَ يَا أَيَّتُهَا الشَّمْسَ تَعْلَى فَاشْأَدِي أَلَى مَا قَدْ شَهَدُ اللَّهِ عَلَى النَّفْسِ بِإِنَّهِ لَا إِلَهِ إِلَّا هُوَ الْعَزِيزَ الْمَحْبُوبِ um, there are other prayers that will translate this um, from the Arabic into English and put it in the description box or on my blog uh, regarding this prayer. Now, what also the Bab recommends in terms of a theurgical practice, in terms of repelling the impure and turning the impure to purity, is a particular zikr or a particular mantra that he recommends in all three of these books, the Persian and Arabic bayans, and the Heikaladin, the book of the talisman of the religion. And he states that if over anything, the mantra of Allahu Athar, God is the most pure. Again, Allahu Athar, God is the most pure. If 66 times to the numerical value of Allah or God, if this zikr or this mantra is recited on anything, and that also includes oneself, it will purify it. So, for example, one of my um, one of my own practices that I use as a practice of qusl is to go underneath a shower and to recite the the mantra of Allahu Athar, God is the most pure, sixty six times as the water flows over me. Right? Um, one needs to get really into this exercise. Um, there is a lot of creative imagination that may be involved, you know, uh, in in order to make this clear, but it works as a practice. You know, reciting Allahu Athar 66 times over oneself as a purifying exercise. Now, the Bab, just as all of the major figures of the occult tradition and also the Imams of the Ahl Bayt, alayhim salam, believes that the greatest name, the, the symbol of the greatest name, is the symbol of the greatest name uh, that I have uh, not introduced, but that I have uh, publicized all over my blogs. Uh, and all over uh, my, you know, my Facebook and the various pages that I have, that that symbol of the greatest name is the symbol of the greatest name, not the one that the Baha'is have made up. Um, and that this symbol, in his commentary on the, uh, on the Surah of Power, the, the 97th Surah of the Qur'an, the Bab states that whoever engraves the symbol on a red agate, right, uh, and he calls it the Aqiq uh, al-Yamani. Now, Aqiq uh, al-Yamani is the blood ruby agate or blood ruby carnelian that is veinless. doesn't mean that the agate itself has necessarily come physically from Yemen. Um, the technical word for these blood ruby um, agates, which are a species of the carnelian stone, is in Arabic Aqiq um, yamani So the Yemenite Aqiq. And he states that whoever carves, engraves the greatest name um, on an agate, a red agate, right, and wears it as a ring, will, will attract all good to themselves, and this ring will function for them as a talisman, a protective talisman, a hairs, he calls it. And this, um, this recommendation comes in uh, his commentary on the Tafsir Surah al the commentary on the Surah of Power, right? So these are very basic recommendations that exist in the corpus of the writings of, of the Bab, the primal point, about magical protection. Uh, and I would advise people, you know, who are very serious about, you know, using both the scientific material uh, strategies to also think about using these techniques and technologies from these traditions, um, and especially uh, one that comes from uh, a, a post-Islamic tradition such as the Bayan, um, as a way to repel the spread of this virus. You know, so what do you have to lose, oh people, if, for example, you're a, a, a health worker or whatnot, if you, for example, you were not only to wipe down an, a, a given area in a hospital, um, uh, but also in that area of the hospital recite the mantra, the dhikr of Allahu Athar 66 times, 66 times the numerical value of God. 
uh, or if a given patient, for example, were to come in, if one were to project this zikr, this mantra of Allahu Athar upon them, uh, what do we have to lose? I mean, that, I'm not advocating that that is the sole thing that one should use. You know, I am very much a advocate of uh, trusting God, but tying one's camel. But what do you have to lose by by using some of these technologies um, for repelling these things? So the mantra of Allahu Athar, God is the most pure, over anything that may be contaminated in, in the belief of, of a medical professional or any kind of health, health worker, right? You know, wipe it all down and then recite this mantra of Allahu Athar 66 times over it. And inshallah, by the will of the All High, um, this impurity, which is the coronavirus, will be purified and the virus will be gone. People have nothing to lose by that. These are words of power. Um, um, I have, you know, over 30 years of experience with this particular zikr, this particular mantra, and it works, and it works extremely well, and it works even better. For example, if one visualizes the symbol of the greatest name itself while one is reciting this mantra of Allahu Athar, God is the most pure. Um, there are many mysteries to this particular zikr, this particular mantra. Uh, for example, its numerical value of 281 uh, is equivalent to what the Bab calls the, one of the names of God uh, amongst the 361 names of God, uh, the name Ra'i or the patron which is the 167th uh, name in the book of the names of all things. There are further mysteries to this name. This particular name, its gematria of 281, resolves to 11, which is Hua, which according to the Western magical uh, tradition, this number 11 is the number of magic. It's the number of theurgy. Um, there are other mysteries to this. This particular mantra works. People have nothing to lose. By using it, they should use it alongside all the current uh, medical technology available. Um, it is just a it is just a form of mindfulness uh, using one of the methods uh, from the tradition of the Bayan that is specifically designed for this very thing. You know, to purify, right? So Allahu Athar, sixty six times over anything contaminated. La hujja ila aliyan qabla nabil.